I've always been good friends with one of my cousins, Cole, who's the same age I am. The two of us were not quite inseparable, but we always did get along very well together and were often found together, both in school and outside of it. When we were 12 and in the sixth grade, I was hanging out with Cole on a Friday afternoon around the later part of May, and we were psyched at the start of the weekend. We wound up at his house since he didn't live too far from me, and at one point my mom called to say that our grandpa was in the hospital. While the issue with our grandpa wasn't expected to be life-threatening, he was being kept at the hospital overnight for observation, and both my parents and Coles were planning on staying with him and grandma at the hospital, since my mom and her sister were the two siblings who lived close by. I was told that I was given the okay to stay at Cole's house for the night, with Cole's 15-year-old brother Hunter being in charge while our parents were out. This was fine by us. I got along well enough with Hunter, and he was never the bossy older brother that some of my other friends said they had to put up with. We ordered pizza and enjoyed goofing off as boys that age tend to do. At around nine or so, there was a knock at the front door, and Cole went to answer it. I was a bit curious as to who it could be at that time of the night, so I watched from a ways back. At the door were two older guys. They said that they were investigating reports about the water pressure supposedly being bad in the neighborhood. They asked Cole if his parents were home, and when Cole said they were unavailable at that moment, which we were told to say to strangers if our parents weren't home, the guys started asking a bunch of questions about how the water pressure was in the house and if they could come inside to check. Hunter came over at that point and politely told the guys that the water pressure was fine and perhaps they should move on to check on other homes in the neighborhood. The guys seemed reluctant to leave but turned and walked away after Hunter started closing the door. After the door was shut, we looked at each other and shrugged, but didn't think too much of it after that and went back to goofing off. Eventually, we decided to go to bed. Cole and Hunter shared a bedroom, and we all agreed that I'd sleep in there with them, rather than me hitting the sack on the couch or something like that, so that we could talk while we fell asleep, and Hunter grabbed a sleeping bag out of their camping supplies for me. When we got into their bedroom, they stripped down to their briefs, and I remembered Cole had mentioned to me once a while back that they had started sleeping in just their underwear. Since I hadn't originally planned on staying the night, I hadn't brought anything with me from home as far as overnight stuff, but since I wasn't in the mood to sleep in my clothes, I stripped down to my briefs as well, though I felt a bit embarrassed, even though we were all guys there and I knew they wouldn't say anything or be judgmental. They climbed into their beds, and I quickly crawled into the sleeping bag, and after talking for a while about random stuff, we eventually fell asleep. Early the next morning, I got up because I had to pee, and so I quietly got out of the sleeping bag and went and did my business in the bathroom. On the way back to the bedroom, I heard something in the family room, which was on the opposite end of the house from the bedrooms and the particular bathroom I was using. I didn't pay too much attention to it at the time, thinking it must be either Cole or Hunter until I got back into the bedroom and realized that both of them were still in there. Trying not to panic, I woke them and told them that I thought someone was in the house. They quietly followed me, and the moment we walked into the family room, we saw the two guys from the night before in there, and it was rather clear they were robbing the place. One of them started moving towards us as he pulled out a wicked-looking knife. The three of us promptly raced to the front door, somehow managed to get it unlocked and open, and we fled outside. As luck would have it, a cop was driving by at that particular moment. We quickly flagged him down and told him about the two guys in the house. The cop called for backup, and within a couple of minutes, several other cops were there, and they proceeded to enter the house, and after some searching, they caught the two guys. The cops figured out that the two guys must have entered from a window in the laundry room that had a broken latch, and had probably targeted that house because, while it wasn't empty, they'd probably realized that there were no adults there, and figured that if we discovered them, we could be more easily dealt with than adults. To add insult to injury, while we were waiting outside while the cops searched the house, both to get the two guys and make sure that there was no one else with them, some of the neighbors came out to see what the commotion was about, and this included some kids who went to the same school as Cole and me. It was during that time that the three of us realized that we'd never had the chance to get dressed. So, just like in the stereotypical nightmare, we had to stand outside in full view of everyone in just our briefs for what seemed like forever before being allowed back inside. When we went back to school on Monday, Cole and I had to put up with more than a bit of snickering, stares, and ribbing for the next few weeks until school ended for the summer.
This happened to me and my friends over 10 plus years ago on the night of my 14th birthday party sleepover. My parents at the time had a garage on our property that they had partly renovated. It had walls and a bathroom but still had the garage door that rolled up that wasn't completely sealed, and there weren't any curtains on the windows. They were letting us use the garage when we had friends over to hang out in. Also, our property wasn't totally isolated, but the nearest neighbor was nearly two kilometers away. We had never really had any issues on our street, and it was the kind of place where you didn't really lock your doors. So comes the day for my birthday party. Up until this point my parents had let my brother stay in the garage, but I hadn't been allowed to have friends sleep there overnight yet. Being the incredibly mature 14-year-old girls that we thought we were, I pleaded with my parents to let us have the sleepover in the garage rather than in the living room. My mom was skeptical, but my dad agreed that since it was my birthday, it would be okay. After a long day filled with sugar and driving my parents crazy, we finally got ready to have the sleepover in the garage, with strict instructions that we were to go to bed and lights out by 11 p.m. Also, it was my responsibility to ensure that the garage roller door was locked from the inside. I dutifully locked the door, and we settled in for a night of more sugar and TV. At 11 p.m., we turned off the lights but couldn't sleep, so we decided, as teenagers do, to have a game of hide-and-seek with the lights off. We were about three rounds in, and my best friend was it. I was hiding half behind a cupboard that was beside the roller door. Everyone was giggling when the first person got caught. Then I heard the giggling coming from behind me. At first I thought it must have been an echo because there was no way someone had managed to find a hiding place behind me, with me up against the wall. The second person was caught, and there was more giggling coming from behind me. Now I was freaking out, but being the idiot I was, I didn't want to spoil the game, so I quietly moved to a different spot facing one of the windows. Now it was pretty dark outside, but the moon was bright, so you could see shadows, but that was about it. It was completely dark inside the garage. I was concentrating on not being found when I saw a shadow pass by the window and stop. Now I was sure there was someone outside, but I thought it might be my dad or my oldest brother about to catch us not in bed, so I froze. My best friend ran straight into me and started laughing. I quickly shushed her and said, My dad's outside. We need to get back into bed. We quickly grabbed the other girls and quietly got back into our beds, thinking that we had all avoided getting into trouble when we didn't hear my dad saying anything. I turned over in my bed, but the shadow hadn't moved. By this time, I am majorly freaking out. The shadow moves away. Then there is scratching on the garage door. This time, the other girls had noticed. We all started to quietly panic, and we all got into my bed, hoping whatever it was would go away, or that we were having a sugar hallucination. The knocking on the door started, and more giggling. We freak out but don't scream. I just got a phone for my birthday, but it was over in the house with the rest of the presents. So with no way to quietly call my parents, we yelled at them to go away. Cue more giggling and then banging on the windows. We could see the shadow, and it was fairly big, so it would have had to be a grown man or a big teenager. We throw a mattress from one of the beds up against the window so they couldn't see us. He went to another window. We decided to hide in the bathroom with the door partially open so I could see out. The garage door started to rattle and bang like he was forcing it open. He had never stopped giggling. I gave up at this point and let out the loudest scream that I ever had in my life. The other girls started to scream too. The garage door stopped making noise. We creep out and see the lights on over at the house, and my dad running to us at the same time as a car started up and took off from the side of the road. We didn't get time to see what the car was before my dad was opening the door with the key. My dad opened the door to five hysterical girls. He took us all over to the house to my mom, who calmed us down and finally got us all to sleep by letting us sleep together in their room with the king-size bed. Suffice to say, it was another two years before I could sleep in that garage again. Any sleepovers were at the house, and me and my friends were so freaked out that we apparently all slept with the lights on for the next few nights. Also, my parents locked all our doors and windows from that point on. So a few years back, me and a few friends had walked across our town to go to the town center. We were around 13 at the time. Our town was not huge, but it was one of the bigger towns in the county, and there was a lot of crime in the area, usually related to drugs. We were walking along one of the main roads because it was the shortest way to get to the town center. 
We were all staying at our friend John's house later that night, and we wanted to get some snacks and maybe some new games if they were cheap. Well, we made it to the town center, all was well and good, but on the way back is when it got a bit creepy, about halfway between John's house, which is on the really bad side of town, and the town center. While walking down the main road, we noticed a man in a dark jacket walking behind us. It was around 5 p.m., and it was February, so it was getting a bit darker. We thought nothing of it initially, but as we walked further, we noticed he was still following us. We decided to pick up our pace to try and get back as fast as we possibly could while trying to remain calm. Despite taking a different route home to try and lose this man, he stuck with us, walking about 10 meters behind us. We were at the bottom of John's street when the man started to slow down. We got back, and while we were shaken up about the man following us, we didn't think it was a big deal, so we didn't bother telling John's mom or brother. Later on, around 9 p.m., John's mom went out to spend time with some of her friends, and his brother was at a neighbor's house. We were sitting in the living room. John's house was laid out in a way that the sofa in the living room was visible from the kitchen, and the kitchen had a window at the front side of the house. We were watching a film, and I went to get a drink. I walked to the fridge next to the window and got some coke. When I closed the door, I glanced at the window to look out. I thought I noticed someone there, but it was dark outside, and the light was on in the kitchen, so it was hard to see outside properly. I shrugged it off and walked back to the living room. About 20 minutes passed and I glanced back over to the window. Now the kitchen light was off, as was the living room light, making it easier to see outside. I could quite clearly see a man there, and he looked exactly like the man who was following us on the way home, wearing the same dark jacket, staring at me and my friends intently. I looked back at the TV, not trying to give anything away. I told my friends that I think there was someone at the window, but not to all look. John turned and looked. He was as shocked as I was. We were all 13 years old and home alone. Needless to say, we pretty much shat ourselves. John got up and went over to the home phone, which was just next to the front door, and called his brother. He said he would come over straight away. We made sure the front door and back door were locked and sat in the living room until his brother came back. Thankfully, the man was gone by the time John's brother got back. We checked the house and the garden just in case he was hiding somewhere, but he was gone. We all thought this would be the end and that we wouldn't see the man again. But a few weeks later, me and my friends were walking to a sports event, taking the same route we had taken previously, and we saw the man again. This time, he didn't follow us, but as we walked past, he stared at us intently. None of us knew who this man was or why he followed us. None of us have seen the man since and hopefully we never will.